I am quitting full-time information security and software development work to work full-time on my own startup, Grabber App. I'm going to talk a little bit about why, how I came to this decision, and what my plans are for the future as a result of that. It's going to be kind of a long and rambly video. I'm going to kind of try to stick to the scripts a little bit, but that may or may not end up happening. So let's get the practical out of the way first. I put up a community post about this not that long ago. I think like a grand total of three people saw it, um, basically saying that I was laid off. This has happened twice in the last six months and three times in the last two years. Um, it almost happened another time. I ended up finding out that one of the companies that I left willingly actually did layoffs of the team that I was on very shortly after I left. So it just about happened three times in about six months and four times in two years. Um, that's a lot. The market sucks. Um, basically, you know, I've, I've met several other people who have gone through several different layoffs. You know, it, it sucks. Um, it's very unstable. And for folks like me specifically in the like threat intelligence engineering and security engineering space, it's a very, very unstable market right now. Um, you know, you're dealing with a ton of layoffs, you're dealing with a ton of insecurity, you're dealing with everybody talking about this upcoming recession. It's, it's the worst. Everybody and their brother and their brother's dog Fido are doing layoffs. And folks like me who are kind of in a weird niche spot with like security software development functionally, um, or security automation, I guess, we're kind of targeted a little bit more because we're not super senior devs and we're not super senior security folks. We're kind of like in the middle. And one of the things that has kind of shocked me is that re-entering the job market or re-entering the looking for a job market, um, basically all of the positions that are left open are super senior jobs. Like you have to be like a gray beard guru in order to get a job right now. Um, in part, that's because a ton of incredibly talented developers have entered the market because of all of these layoffs. I mean, we're talking about thousands of developers have all of a sudden found themselves looking for jobs. Thousands of threat intelligence folks and threat hunting folks and all of that have found themselves looking for jobs. Like large, well-known companies have completely gone under in the last couple of months. Um, so the market's nuts. And what essentially happened is the market got flooded with incredibly talented engineers and a ton of different companies decided that they weren't going to hire any more people. So what you basically have is you have a massive pool of engineers all competing over the same exact jobs, and companies know that A, they can be incredibly picky, and B, they don't have to give out very good compensation. I'm not exaggerating when I say that I've filled out over 120 applications over the last three weeks. Of those 120 applications, I have secured two interviews, and I use interviews kind of in quotes. One of them was an actual job interview that said that it would take at minimum three weeks to get back to me to schedule my second interview. Um, and the position advertised a pay rate that was about a third, less than a third of what I was making previously. The second interview, and I put interview in quotes, was for a position that wasn't actually open. It was somebody basically saying, hey, we might have openings here soon, so interview for this job. Don't have any problem with that necessarily, but it also means that I'm not actually interviewing for a specific job. I'm basically talking to somebody about what I would like to get if a job actually opens up. Um, so functionally, applying for jobs has been super deflating. Um, it's been a rough couple of weeks, especially the, the way that I was laid off from this previous job was... Um, I did not, I was not told that I was going to get laid off. I found out that I was getting laid off when I got a notification that my Slack access was cut and my email access was cut. I never got to talk to my manager about it. Um, she gave some reasoning that, you know, basically insinuated that I had lied to her about something. Um, shortly after that, several other people got laid off. Shortly before that, several other people got laid off. And functionally, what I believe is, Either there was a massive overreaction to me like miscommunicating something because you know I'm a very honest and upfront person and it was a very, very small detail that we were talking about previously. Um, and when I say previously, I mean three hours before I was laid off. So um, you know, either there was just a massive blow up over what is an incredibly small detail um, that I miscommunicated about or, I was a contractor working at a company that did cost-cutting measures, and I was just a victim of that. 
I don't know. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, all that to say, it's been incredibly deflating and the lack of success in the job market has been even more deflating. Um, the big thing that's kind of been in my head over the last three weeks has been, do I really want to risk going and getting another job in software development or going and getting another job in security automation or something like that and just have this happen again when the actual recession starts? Because not to get like into the politics of it all, but functionally in the United States, everybody is of the belief that there's a recession coming. I'm not an economist. I don't know enough about the issues to really know whether or not that's true. But if that is the case, we have not even started the recession yet. Basically what's happening now are cost cutting measures in preparation for the possible recession. So my thinking was, do I really want to go and get another full-time job, one that's probably going to pay a lot less and one that I'm probably not going to enjoy? Or do I find something better? So Grabber App is a startup that's been in my head for the better part of three years now. Um, I've iterated over it a couple of times. It's taken a lot of different forms. Um, it was under the name Sketchy Rec the last time I worked on it. Um, but I've been like actually doing dev work for the better part of a year and a half to two years now. Um, one of the reasons why it's taken so long and it hasn't launched yet is I've been doing this on nights and weekends. I've got two kids and a wife and previously a full-time job um, as well as consulting and YouTube and lots of other stuff. Um, this meant that I did not have just a ton of time to dedicate to writing code for Grabber App. Um, that said, over time, I've talked to several different colleagues of mine in the industry, and they all think that it's an awesome idea and that you know I should definitely move forward with it. I just kept coming up with excuses. After layoff one, um, I thought to myself, I should put some more work into this. Someday it might take off, and I won't ever have to depend on other people to feed my kids again. After layoff two, I should put more work into this and someday it might take off and I won't have to worry about money and I won't have to worry about somebody else taking food from my kids. And then layoff three happened. And I was like, okay, if I had actually been working on this for the last two years, chances are I'd layoff three never would have happened. I'd be doing this full time. So after layoff three, I really kind of sat back and I said, okay, I'm not in the greatest financial position, to just jump ship and start doing this. But is this something that I want to keep putting off? Am I going to keep putting this off in hopes that, you know, this next job and the next job and the next job is going to be the one that's actually secure, the one that I can kind of stick with for a while and that, you know, gives, you know, like keeps kind of some money under me and like I can start saving up to actually start working on this full time? Or do I just go full ham and work on this full time and really execute on it? Um, like I mentioned before, I've got two kids and a wife. It's not just me that's kind of depending on the income. So it's a pretty large undertaking to decide to do something like this. Um, it's not something that I just jumped on immediately. Like I said, I've been filling out applications left and right for the last three, three weeks. But combined with the state of the market right now, combined with what I really want to do, combined with a lot of conversations with my family, I kind of decided that you know, I needed to do this full time. And it's something I wanted to put a lot of effort into. Um, that came with some sacrifices. Um, you know, obviously one of them being like, we're really strapped right now, which sucks. Um, the other one being, I kind of changed my launch plan. Um, initially, I had planned on launching with a huge feature set and enterprise subscriptions and all of this other stuff. And now that I'm doing this full time, I kind of have to start getting revenue fairly soon. I'm also looking at venture funding, which is a blast. And it feels weird that I'm even talking about that. Um, but, you know, VCs, especially during a recession, want to see revenue before they start investing in your company. So that is what I'm looking at right now. Um, the MVP has been moved up. It's going to be a much more limited MVP and it's going to be a lot cheaper, um, which is great for everybody, honestly. Um, Grabber app has been my baby for a while. The idea behind it has been, you know, something that I've been really passionate about. And the fact that I'll be launching it very soon is incredibly exciting, obviously. Um, so what does that mean for everything else? 
I initially had the idea to do some freelancing and consulting. Um, I'm still not, you know, closed off to that idea as long as it's limited enough for me to work on, you know, this application full time. But functionally, I'm going to be putting a lot of effort into like really going into grabber app development. Um, that means that my interface with YouTube is going to change a little bit, which it has a thousand times. Um, it's not going to change a ton. Um, basically, there's going to be close to no polish, no, you know, like actual editing or anything like that, because I can't afford an editor and I can't afford to take the time to edit videos for something that's not earning me any revenue. Um, I love this channel. I love this medium of communication and I love offering like free and cheap education to folks, you know, continuing to develop classes and eBooks and stuff like that is something that's going to come down the road too. But basically a lot of the material that's going to be up on YouTube. A lot of the content going forward is going to be much more focused on what I'm actually working on with Grabber app. That's going to be web application developments, cybersecurity automation, fun stuff like that. Um, probably going to be a little bit less malware development content, but maybe a little bit of malware reverse engineering content, stuff like that. Um, I'll be updating a ton about Grabber app because again, that's what I'm doing full time now. And you'll be hearing a lot more about stuff like that. And you'll also be hearing a lot more about business stuff. Um, I started a second channel a long while ago. I can't even remember when I started it. Um, that was meant to be kind of like a business focused channel. And then I immediately stopped posting to it because I didn't have the time to do one channel, much less two. Um, but you'll be getting that a lot more often on this channel now, which is great. Um, anyways, I hope that this doesn't like, I don't know. It's not going to change the channel all that much, but you know, just kind of check out Grabber App, see if it's something that you or your business can use. Obviously, you know, hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. You can also hit me up on Twitter. You can also email me now, I think. I think my email is on the site. If not, it will be soon. Um, you can sign up for dev updates via email on the site right now. That's like pretty much the only thing that you can do on the main site right now. And I will be updating y'all much more frequently now. Take it easy. Peace.